to my channel, Dr. Meadow here, Health Lair. We are going to be discussing something that has been hitting the news really, really hard, uh, the opioid epidemic. So what is this opioid epidemic everyone keeps talking about? What is an opioid? What is an addiction? Why is it such a big problem? These are exactly the things I'm gonna be talking about. And I'll also mention a really cool program that is available for you guys who, you know, um, have a heroin addiction and you use needles. Uh, this might be a really good idea for you guys to just really keep yourself safe. Uh, I know it's a really difficult addiction to deal with. So let's just jump right into it and um, let's begin. Why has opioid use become such a big problem? Well, I'm gonna tell you something. The National Institute of Health, or the NIH, um, basically looked back years and compared the opioid use uh, in 2001 and 2002 and then looked at it again in 2012 and 2013. Uh, among adults, uh, opioid use, which was usually from prescriptions, uh, it was about 1.8% in 2001 and 2002. One decade later, in 2012 and 2013, the use jumped up to 4.1% of the adult population. But it doesn't sound like very much, but that's actually 10 million people. Um, why have people been using opioids more and more? Uh, there are a lot of conditions that predispose you to pain, and so you need pain medications and painkillers. Uh, so what are opioids? What are some examples? Uh, morphine, Percocet, which a lot of women who you know, do C-sections post-op, you know, after the operation, they get Percocet for pain. Uh, you also have oxycodone, uh, hydrocodone, Vicodin. Uh, if you guys ever watched the show House, House was actually addicted to Vicodin, uh, which is an opioid. Mm, so it is very common. Another thing, fentanyl. So fentanyl is something that is very dangerous because it, it's actually really, really potent of all of them. It's about 10 times as strong and it's why it's used during operations to put you under anesthesia. So it's not something that you want to just take for fun uh, or to feel good. I understand that these are addictions and so it becomes very difficult when you don't have access to your normal pain medications which is why a lot of users of opioids, once they cannot access their prescriptions, they start going outside the prescribed medications and they go into the illicit drug use. So heroin becomes very prominent um, and things like that. And it becomes a very, very difficult issue to deal with because one, these medications, they can cause overdoses. And the amount of overdoses that are, have been you know, happening or, uh, in the United States because of opioids is very dangerous, which is why now a lot of uh, paramedics, a lot of emergency response teams, a lot of people are having a lot of access to something called Narcan in their person. Like in the ambulances, they have Narcan because they are realizing that Narcan is a life-saving drug, especially when it comes to opioids. Uh, Narcan is another name for naloxone and naloxone basically reverses the effects of the overdose so it will save your life if you overdose on an opioid and the issue with opioid overdose is that it decreases your respiration so basically you stop breathing and you die so it's not that it's going to cause you you know to have like all these really bad adverse effects like you get seizures or you have like a heart attack or something like that like cocaine but it will cause you to stop breathing so it kind of is a silent killer which is why it's so dangerous to overdose on opioids um, so why has this all of a sudden become a huge problem? Well, chronic conditions like arthritis or lower back pain or depression, even psychiatric illnesses that are sometimes go hand in hand with chronic pain conditions, uh, they do require a lot of pain medications. And this is a huge issue because they actually did a study and it turns out that a lot of physicians they didn't receive special training to be able to properly and comfortably prescribe pain medications. And so what happens is that you prescribe the medication and this patient takes it home and you obviously advise them, hey, this is addictive and you know, it's all physicians, we all do this, we have to tell the patients the addictive properties of it to be careful, to take it only when you have pain, only when needed. The problem is that some of these pain conditions are so severe that you are so afraid of feeling the pain that you will take the opioid before you even get to the pain. And this is when it becomes a problem because not only do you start building tolerance, which means that now one pill no longer does it for you, now you need a little bit extra, um, you also start having uh, cravings and you start having all these behaviors, the, uh, 
addiction behaviors. You start going out of your way to get the medication. You start lying. You start uh, cheating your friends. You start stealing money. You start doing odd jobs to get extra cash so you can buy these mints. So I'm going to just take this hat off. It's getting kind of hot in here. Sorry. Um, uh, but what I do want to continue to say is that um, opioid addiction is a very severe issue and it's uh, very common and the only issue with opioids is that it does lend itself to start seeking outside medications like heroin. Uh, why is heroin so bad? I mean aside from yes heroin is bad it's a drug and it's gonna get you addicted and you do all these weird behaviors to get the drug but another issue with heroin is the way you use it. So the way you inject it, essentially. Um, a lot of people use needles to inject heroin. So what happens is, you know, you have a needle, you inject it, next day, your buddy comes over and he doesn't have a needle, but hey, he wants to use it too. So what happens? You are a good friend and you lend him your needle. The problem with this is, is that you're gonna start spreading diseases that get passed from fluids, like HIV. Um, which can then lead to AIDS. It can also uh, give you hepatitis C, which is a chronic condition of your liver that you're gonna end up living with. And eventually it can cause uh, liver cancer. So these are things that have become a huge problem, especially here in Miami. And what I do wanna say is there is a program, it's called the Idea Exchange, and it's based off in Miami. Uh, and what someone from the school did, his name is Dr. Tooks, uh, he took it upon himself to create this program, he went to legislature and he got it passed so that he could do a pilot study in which he was able to see how many needles were found in Miami. He saw that there were extremely high levels of needles in the streets. I mean, in the streets, needles on the streets. This is so dangerous. Um, and so then he decided to go to legislature and get this pilot passed so that he could kind of start giving clean needles to heroin users. Now, I know this doesn't sound like something good. It kind of sounds like you're promoting uh, bad behavior. But when you're going to do something bad, the only thing you can do if you can't prevent the behavior is to at least make the behavior safe. Uh, it's very similar to sex education and trying to provide condoms to young kids who are engaging in sexual relationships. You can't prevent them from having sex, but if you're going to have it, you better do it the safe way. This has the same exact mentality. I can't stop you from injecting yourself with heroin, but if you're going to do it, then here's a clean needle so that you protect yourself, you protect your neighbors, and you don't start passing diseases within each other. Um, and this has actually decreased the uh, prevalence or the amount of HIV cases here in the South Florida. So this has been a really successful pilot study. This is actually available uh, for you guys in Miami. If you do use heroin and you do inject and you do find that you're sharing needles, obviously get yourself tested for HIV, get yourself tested for hepatitis C, uh, get yourself checked out. So if you do use heroin and you do inject and you do use needles, the best advice I can give you is try to get help for your addiction, but if you're gonna continue using, please do it the safe way and get clean needles and do not share. Uh, this is extremely important because AIDS is a life debilitating disease and you can die from this. Uh, although we have decreased, you know, with all these medications, we have decreased the amount of mortality and death rates from HIV and AIDS. Uh, it is something you live with for the rest of your life. So it's something you definitely want to think about and avoid. Uh, and for those of you who have family members or you know someone or you have siblings or friends who do use heroin and you know that they don't use clean needles, take them to, to, you know, to, the, to the center. I will put the link and the address of the place uh, down below so you guys can go and check it out. Uh, you guys can ask questions. It's a place that you are safe. No one's there to judge you. No one's there to tell you that you are killing yourself. No one is there to place judgment. They are there to provide you with a safe way of dealing with your addiction. Uh, that is all they are doing. And I think that this would be really beneficial for you guys. And it's here in Miami, so why would I not even talk about it? Of the opioids, I gave you the medications. Uh, I told you why it's a big problem in South Florida. I told you that there is a medication, Narcan, that can save your life. Um, the Idea Exchange program based in Miami by Dr. Tooks also has Narcan and they can teach you how to use it. So if you do use heroin, they may be able to provide you with more information on this medication that can possibly save you or your friend's life or your family member. So it's important to always, you know, keep yourself informed for your own health. Obviously, if you guys have any questions, please leave them below. If you have any, you know, likes, 
it dislikes, any comments at all whatsoever, you know, let me know, don't be afraid. If you yourself have an addiction and you're afraid to talk about it, please go right ahead and write to me privately. Uh, this is a no judgment zone. This is health layer. This is a cave of health uh, topics and information. And this is for you guys to benefit, not for me. I'm doing this for you guys because I want you guys to take a more active role in your own lives and in your own health. And I'm just here to kind of help you and support you in, in that way. Um, so if you guys have any questions, please let me know. Uh, if you guys know someone with an addiction and you want to know more about the idea exchange program that there is in Miami by Dr. Tooks, I will send you more information. I will send you where you can go, the things that you can ask, the people that you can talk to. Uh, there is always someone to talk to. You are actually never, never alone. You just have to go get the help you need. Um, so again, thanks for watching. I will see you guys next week. Oh, I don't know why I'm holding this owl. <laughs> it's like giving me a little bit of comfort. I don't know. Uh, but definitely, you know, um, send me what you're interested in hearing about and I will do that. Uh, I know that it is still, you know, uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month and I haven't talked about breast cancer. Uh, but I will if you guys want me to, if you want more information, I can definitely do that. Uh, so yeah, just let me know and give me your comments, your feedback. I love it. Interact with me. Follow me on all social media. Don't forget to subscribe. See you next week. Bye.